Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Gonzalez Filos. I am the editor in chief at The Runner, and this we can expect from our latest issue. For this issue's feature story, I wrote about the Kwan Student Association and a timeline of everything that has happened over the past two years since the pandemic began. The KSA is a non-profit organization that is separate from Kwan Polytechnic University that exists to provide services and advocate for students' interests. Almost every student at the university is part of the KSA, which is mainly funded by students through tuition fees. The article explains how the KSA helped students in 2020 during the pandemic with certain initiatives like financial assistance, the Transit Pass Subsidy Program, and reopening the KSA Food Bank. It also gives a glimpse into council meetings, events the KSA has hosted over the past two years, the slating disqualifications last year, and everything in between. For this story, I talked to KSA Executive Secretary Jeremy Law about council meetings, the student union building, and the next steps for that project. I also talked to Leslie Senga, who is currently the unofficial Students with Disabilities representative, about the recent annual general meeting, events KSA has hosted over the past two years, and the recent general election. This culture article was written by Brianna Himmelright. From April 6th to May 7th, the City of Surrey is offering residents a way to increase biodiversity and help the local environment through their Relief Tree Planting Program, where the public is invited to plant a tree or shrub in one of Surrey's many parks. The City will provide the tools and training necessary for the planting, and participants can enjoy a family-friendly self-guided activity in the park after the planting is done. Rob Landucci, urban forestry manager at the City of Surrey says, This results in the creation of new habitat and food sources for insects, birds, and mammals. Once the plants are installed, Landucci says the city has maintenance programs to ensure the trees and shrubs are watered for up to five years after installation. Among the rising costs of post-secondary education, the British Columbia Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training announced last month that they are planning to launch a review of how it funds operations at colleges and universities. The review is to help ensure institutions have the resources they need to support economic recovery and student success, as well as help contribute to develop an updated funding model. The current model follows a specific funding formula for general operations, not including specific programs or student seats. This accounts for 75% of the money the province gives BC post-secondary institutions every year. I talked to Don Ray, who was the former president of BCIT and deputy minister to the premier, and he will be leading the engagement's first phase out of a two-step process. He will contact various organizations involved in the public post-secondary education sector to better understand the issues occurring to help fix them. He will provide a report of his findings to the government by summer 2023. I also talked to Melissa Carino, who is the chairperson for the British Columbia Federation of Students, and she says the organization has been advocating for a new funding model for years. She explains how she sees the review helping post-secondary institutions and students, and how she hopes the review will help out even out the costs for community colleges or institutions in general to get more support. This opinion article was written by Manji Tour. The Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission recently approved telecom company Rogers' acquisition of the broadcasting services of Canada's fourth largest telecom company, Shaw Communications Inc. Rogers is one of the top three telecom companies in Canada, and this acquisition will allow Rogers to obtain even more Western Canadian customers on top of its nationwide base, widening the gap between itself and its competitors. Competitors Bell and TELUS oppose the merger because it puts them at a competitive disadvantage. Canadians already pay some of the highest mobile plan fees in the industrialized world. In an environment where there are fewer players, Manji argues the situation will only get worse and urges people to remain vigilant both with politics and business as ignorance leads to situations like this.